In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, your fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. His robes for mine. That was a relatively new hymn that we just sang, His Robes for Mine. And as you sang that hymn, did you catch the gist of it? This hymn was all about a trade. A trade that God made with you. A trade where God took your filthy and dirty robes that were stained with sin and put them on himself and in return... He gave to you his holy and his pure and his clean robe. Well, 2,600 years earlier, the prophet Jeremiah used similar words. Words that end up talking about this trade that we just sang about. Only as we look at the words from the prophet Jeremiah, we're not going to use the phrase, his robes for mine, as the hymn just did. Instead, as we look at our text from Jeremiah, we're going to use this phrase, his blessing for my curse. For in our text, Jeremiah set up quite the contrast, didn't he? A contrast between those who are cursed and those who are blessed. And before we get into who is cursed and who is blessed, I think it's helpful for us to talk about what it means to be cursed and what it means to be blessed. For oftentimes we use those words, cursed and blessed, so much in common everyday language that they don't really mean what the scriptures mean when they say those words. For a cursed person is not a person who is stuck in the slow lane of traffic on a way to work. A person whose teacher or boss gives them a big assignment late in the day, or a person who has to endure some terrible weather on their only day off. Nor is a cursed person, a person with financial difficulties, or health difficulties, or someone who roots for the Detroit Lions. Those are often the way we use the word cursed, right? But that's not necessarily what it means when the scriptures use the word curse. For as Jeremiah says in our text, a cursed person is like a juniper bush in the wasteland. Meaning it's someone who struggles to sustain life. A cursed person does not see good things when they come. And it's not because they are blind or need a change in their prescription. Instead, they can't enjoy even the good things that come into their life because they just have this lingering cloud of death hanging over their head. Or a cursed person is someone who lives in a dry place in the wilderness or in a salty land where no one lives. And this is perhaps the worst thing about being cursed. It's loneliness. No one there to support you. No one there to help you. No one there to come to your aid. For you see, a cursed person has their fate already sealed. A cursed person is going to face death. And there is nothing that they can do to receive life. That's what it means to be cursed. Contrast that with what it means to be blessed. You see, a blessed person is not someone who gets record time on their trip or has free time whenever they come home in the evening. Nor is a blessed person someone who always enjoys good weather and has the financial means to take all sorts of vacations. Nor is a blessed person somebody who has great health or somebody who roots for a team that's hosted four straight AFC championships. No. But according to the scriptures, a blessed person is a person who is a tree planted by the water, meaning they are absolutely full of life. A blessed person is a person whose roots are sent out to the stream. They have no fear of dying, no fear of being toppled over. They're connected to the source of life. It's why the scriptures say they're green and they do not be afraid even in times of drought. And finally, a blessed person is someone who does not stop producing fruit. 
fruit that is beneficial for all, fruit that shows how alive that blessed person actually is. Do you see the distinction between those who are cursed and those who are blessed? It's not just that bad things happen to cursed people and good things happen to blessed people. For as long as you live in this world, you are going to face bad things and good things. You are living in a world that is affected with sin. It's why bad things are going to come into this world. And yet you're living in a world that is controlled by God. It's why there are so many good things as well. And so it's not just about whether or not you have a bad experience or a good experience to decide whether or not you are cursed or blessed. Instead, it's all about death and life. A cursed person is dead without the hope of being alive. A blessed person is alive without the fear of ever dying. That's the distinction between being cursed and being blessed. And if that's the distinction between being cursed and being blessed, if it is all about being dead or alive, well, then it's really important to be able to answer this question. Are you cursed or are you blessed? Well, the prophet Jeremiah gives a pretty clear answer in our text, doesn't he? He starts off by saying, this is what the Lord says. So we know it's absolutely true. Cursed is anyone who trusts in mankind, who seeks his strength from human flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Many in Jeremiah's day in Jerusalem was doing just that. For you see, in Jeremiah's day, there was this big, powerful nation called Babylon that was setting its sights on Jerusalem. They were going to come to Jerusalem, siege the city, and wage war against that city. That's what's happening in Jeremiah's day. But many people living in Jerusalem, as they were under this threat, were not trusting in the Lord. They were not trusting in the one who has power over all and rules over all and controls all. Instead, the people in Jerusalem began to trust in men. They were trusting even in their own military strength or perhaps even worse. They were trying to make a military alliance with Egypt, hoping that by Egypt's power they would be saved. And that was something God had explicitly told them not to do. And because they were trusting in men under this threat of war from Babylon, as opposed to trusting in the Lord God, these people living in Jerusalem were cursed. They were cursed not just because war was coming. They were cursed not just because they were being carried off into captivity. Instead, they were cursed in a much, much worse way. For if they were trusting in men, at the expense of trusting in the Lord God, well, then they were cursed with death, eternal death. For anyone who has abandoned their trust in the Lord to trust in men is going to be cursed. And that's a warning that you and I need to hear. For while all of us know the first commandment to have no other gods, while all of us want to fear, love, and trust in God above all things, while all of us woke up this morning wanting to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, a careful examination of our life, well, it shows that at times we don't act all that different than those who lived in Jerusalem in the days of Jeremiah. For you see, all too often we trust in men as opposed to trusting in the Lord our God. For we face issues as we live in this world, right? Oh, sure. Our issue is not a foreign nation called Babylon that's surrounding our city and going to wage war against us and drag us off into captivity. That's what the people in Jeremiah's day were dealing with. But we still we still face other issues as we live in this world. And as we face these issues, it's so easy to act like those in Jeremiah's day and to just start to trust in men and in their strength as opposed to trusting in the Lord our God. Who of us hasn't thought, if only we get the right political party in charge of both the executive and legislative branch, or if only we get the right judges in the Supreme Court, then we can turn this country around. 
or who of us hasn't thought, if only we can convince everybody that black lives matter, or blue lives matter, or all lives matter, then this world would be such a better place. Or, if only everybody would just obey the mandates and get the shot, we can end this pandemic. Or, if only people would stop the mandates and respect my freedom, I can get back to life as normal. If only... Do you see how easy it is to trust in men as opposed to the Lord our God? Oftentimes it happens to us without us even realizing it. For while it is good and right and proper to use our gift of logic and reason which God has given to us, coupled with the word of God, all too often when we're talking about these social issues, we get so fixated on them. That just like the world around us, we think, if only I can convince everybody to have the same wisdom that I do, well, then everything will be fixed, all while forgetting to trust in the one who has power over all and is ruling over all and is in control over all. And when we think that way, we're no better than those in Jerusalem who were seeking a political alliance with Egypt in order to fight off the foreign nation of Babylon. And since all of us at times have trusted in the wisdom of men, as opposed to the wisdom of our God, oftentimes without even recognizing it, well, all of us should be cursed. For Jeremiah is clear, cursed is anyone who trusts in mankind, while he later on says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord. And my dear Christian friends, it just takes one time to trust in man as opposed to the Lord to be cursed. And so is there any hope for us? Well, there is. As long as we remember the phrase, his robes for mine, or his blessing for my curse. For you see, each and every one of us has to confess that we deserve to be cursed. And remember, that's just not bad things happen to me in my life. Being cursed is facing death without the hope of ever being made alive. That's what you deserve. It's what I deserve. It's what we all deserve because of all of our sins, including those times we trusted in men as opposed to the Lord our God. But his robes for mine. His blessing for my curse. You see, God did not want you to be cursed with death without the hope of ever being made alive. God wanted you to be blessed with life without the fear of ever dying. So what did your God do? As we talked about at the beginning of the sermon, he made a trade with you. A trade that just sounds too good to be true. For he took your robe that was so stained and filthy with all the sins that you have committed, and he took that robe off of you, and he placed that robe onto Jesus Christ, his only son. And in return, he took the perfect robe of Jesus, who never sinned once, and he placed that robe on you. Or to use the phrases from our text in Jeremiah. He took the curse that you deserved because of all the times you trusted in men as well as committing all those other sins, and he placed that curse right on his son, Jesus. And in return, he took the blessing that Jesus earned by his perfect life, and he placed that blessing onto you. You see, that's why we see Jesus hanging on a cross. It's why we see him in great agony and bleeding. It's why we see him bowing his head and dying. It's for you. We should have been the one who was cursed. We're the ones who sin. We're the ones who trust in men as opposed to the Lord our God all too often. But it's not us who are cursed. It's Jesus. He's cursed for you. In your place. For your sins. Out of his great love for you, all so that you 
don't have to worry about being cursed. Instead, you can have confidence that you are blessed. For as long as you are joined together with God's Son, Jesus Christ, as long as you are baptized into his holy name as Geo was earlier in this service, as long as you remain in that baptismal grace, joined to the one who suffered and died for you, this trade has happened for you, his robes for yours, his blessing for your curse. That's a pretty good trade, isn't it? And it's a trade you'll get to enjoy for all eternity. And so, my dear Christian friends, maybe you will face war or captivity like the people in Jeremiah's day did. Or maybe it's health issues or financial issues or a pandemic that never ends or you lose all your democratic freedoms. But so what? So what? You're blessed. You're not cursed. You're blessed. And you will always remain blessed as long as you remain in Christ Jesus, your Lord. For as long as you remain in that baptismal grace, there is nothing, nothing that can make you cursed. But as long as you remain in that baptismal grace, you will be blessed forever because it is his robes for yours, his blessing for your curse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we confess the one true faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed.